Hi, uh, I'm Elaya, and this is a message for the graduated class of 2016, parents and friends. Thank you for being here to support this important occasion. In this video, I'm honored to be here at your special day. Congratulations, class of 2016. Languages degrees are awesome, and they help you find meaning where is none. And let me assure you this, there is none. Don't go looking for it. Searching for meaning is like searching for a rhyme scheme in a cookbook. You won't find it, and you will bugger up your souffle. If you didn't like this metaphor, stop the video. You won't like the rest of it. Point being, I'm not an inspirational speaker, and I'm certainly not going to give career advice because, well, I've never really been uh, what most will consider a teacher. However, I have had large groups of people reading what I write for quite a long time, and it has given me an inflated sense of first importance. So I will now, at the prime of old age of 20.8 years old, bestow upon you a couple of life lessons to echo, of course, the lessons from the other previous speakers from today's ceremony. You might find some of this stuff inspiring, you will definitely find some of it boring, and you will definitely forget all it within a week. And be warned, please, there will be lots of similes and obscure aphorisms which start well but end up making nonsense. So listen up or you get lost like a blind man clapping in a pharmacy trying to echolocate the contact lens fluid. This is just a message for my old literature teacher, Marsha Way. Here we go. Are you ready? One, be a teacher. Please, please, please be a teacher. Teachers are the most important and admirable people in the world. You don't have to do it forever, but if you're in a doubt about what to do, be an amazing teacher. Just for your twenties, be a teacher. Be a primary school teacher, especially if you're a man. We need male teachers in primary school in Mexico. Even if you're not a teacher, be a teacher. Share your ideas. Don't take for granted your education. Rejoice in what you learn and spread it. Two, don't have a dream. Americans on talent shows always thought about their dreams. Fine. If you have something you always wanted to do, dream of, like in your heart, go for it. After all, it's something you always wanted to do. Chasing a dream, and it's your time. And if it's a big enough one, it takes most of your time life to achieve. So by the time you get it, you will be staring into the abyss of the meaningless of your achievement and you will be almost dead so it won't matter i never really had one of those dreams and so i advocate passionate dedication to the pursuit of a short term goals be micro ambitious put your head down and work with pride on whatever is in front of you you never know where you might end up just be aware the next worthy pursuit will probably appear in your periphery, which is why you should be careful in long-term dreams. If you focus too far in what is in front of you, you won't see the shiny thing out of the corner of your eyes, right? 3. Exercise I'm sorry, you, lazy, pale, smoking, languages, grads, arcing your eyebrows into a Cartesian curve as watch the human movement moth widen their way through the miniature traffic cones of their existence. You are wrong, and they are right. Well, you are half right. You think, therefore, you exist, yes. But also, you jog, therefore, you sleep. Therefore, you are not overwhelmed by the existential angst and not fat. You can't be Chomsky, and you don't have to be. Play a sport, do yoga, catch Pokemon, or run.
whatever, but you take care of your body. You are going to need it. Most of you teachers are going to live learning 80 years. And even the poorest of you will achieve the level of wealth that most humans throughout history could not have dreamed of. And this long, luxurious life ahead of you is going to make you sometimes depressed. But don't despair. There is a correctional inverse correlation between depression and existence. Do it. Run, my beautiful intellectual languages teachers. Run. Four. Remember is all lucky. You are lucky to be here. You are incalculably lucky to be born and incredibly lucky to be brought up by a nice family who encouraged you to do, go to the university. Or if you were born in a horrible family, that's unlucky and you have my sympathy. But you are still lucky. Lucky that you happen to be made of the sort of DNA that went on to make the sort of brain which when placed in a horrible child environment would make decisions that meant you ended up eventually graduated from university. Well done, you, for dragging yourself up by your shoelaces. But you were lucky. You didn't create the bit of you that dragged you up. They are not even your shoelaces. They are your mother, your father, your grandparents, your brother, your sister, your friends at the faculty. I suppose I worked hard to achieve whatever W's achievements I have achieved, but I didn't make the bit of me that works hard any more than I made the bit of me that ate too many tortas de Doña Mari instead of attending lectures when I was here at WAP classes. I suppose understanding that you can truly take credit for your success, not truly blame others for their failures, will humble you and you make more compassionate things. Empathy is intuitive, but it is also something you can work on intellectually. 5. Be hard on your opinions. We must think critically and not just about the ideas of others. Be hard on your beliefs. Take them out into the backyard and hit them with a baseball bat. Be intellectually rigorous. Identify your bases, your prejudices, your privileges. By the way, while I have lay and left graduates interested in arts and science in this video, please don't make the mistake of thinking the arts and sciences are at odds with one another. There is a reason stupid damaging idea. You don't have to be unscientific to make beautiful art to write beautiful things. If you need proof, Twain, Douglas Adams, McEwan, Sagan, and Shakespeare, Dickens, for a start. You don't need to be superstitious to be a poet. You don't need to, hi to hate NASA technology to care about the beauty of the planet. You don't have to sell out your soul to promote compassion. Science is not a body of knowledge nor a belief system, it's just a term which describes humankind's incremental acquisition of understanding throughout observation. Science is awesome. The arts and sciences need to work together to improve how knowledge is communicated. And you, my friends, are the next responsible people for that. 6. Define yourself by what you love. It doesn't matter if it is translation, or teaching, or interpretation, we have a tendency to define ourselves in opposition to stuff. ¿Qué pasó? 6. Define yourself by what you love. It doesn't matter if it is translation, or teaching, or interpretation, we have a tendency to define ourselves in opposition to stuff but try also to express your compassion for things you love. Be demonstrative, be generous in your prize for those you admire. Send thank you cards and give standing innovations. Be pro-stuff, no anti-stuff. 7. Respect people with less power than you. 
I have in the past made important decisions about people I work with. For example, teachers and principals. Big decisions based largely in how they treat the waiters in the restaurants we have in the meeting in. I don't care if you are the most powerful cat in the room. I will judge you on how you treat the least powerful. 8. Finally, don't rush. You don't need to know what you're going to do with the rest of your life. I'm not saying sit around and smoking cigarettes all day, but also don't panic. It's okay. Most people I know who were sure for the career's path at 20s are having midlife crisis now. I said it at the beginning of this funny speech, which is already two and a half minutes. Life is meaningless. It was not a fee plan assertion. I think it's absurd the idea of seeking meaning in the set of circumstances that happened to exist 13.8 million years ago of unguided events. Leave it to humans to think the universe has a purpose for them. However, I'm not a nihilist. I'm not even a cynic. I am actually rather romantic. And here's my idea of romance. You will soon be dead. Life will sometimes seem long and tough, and God is tiring sometimes. And you will sometimes be happy, and sometimes you will be sad. And then you will be old, and then you will be dead. There is only one sensible thing to do with this empty existence, and that is fill it. Not fill it. Fill it. In my opinion, until I change it, life is best fill it by learning as much as you can. Taking pride in whatever you're doing, having compassion, sharing ideas, running, being enthusiastic, and then there is love, and travel, and wine, and kids, and art, and giving, and mountain climbing, but you know, you already know that stuff. It's an incredibly exciting that thing one life for yours. So good luck out there, and thank you all for including me and including me on this day of celebration. Congratulations, class of 2016.